Hi. Hi. Nice to see you again. Hi, guys. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I realized I just had not turned my um, audio interface on. I was like, I can see them. I can't hear them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Need to turn that on. Now it works. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, Hi, I'll nice to back. meet you. Nice to meet you, Osh. Nice to meet you, you, Tyler. Thank you for your time. So it's OK. <laughs> um, I've had a bit of a funny morning. I didn't plan anything and then ended up in an hour and a half call with someone. So you know, such, such is life sometimes. Yeah. Um, we're here to talk about the legal and policy issues around data regarding Corona Y. Yep. And to hear your thoughts, your feelings, and to give us a bit of uh, introduction from you. I suppose that's the easiest way we can start off. I'll just, um, yeah, I've already got a recording, that's fine. So, Osh, nice to meet you. Tell me something about yourself. Nice to meet you too. So I'll quickly introduce myself um, and then maybe a little bit of what I thought could be helpful um, in context of the Corona Y project. Uh, Vin also was talking about it with Bianca, so I'm probably going to repeat some of our chat yesterday and the last week. Uh, so just a small introduction about myself. Uh, my background is legal and technology, so I'm a lawyer, but I also have a science degree in information systems. And mm -hmm. in the last 10 years, I've been involved in, I mean, the last 10 years, my career was focused mainly on the intersection between law and technology. Um, it means hand in hand, normally with project people, with the project person, um, and implementing by design compliance needs um, of tech law, internet law, data protection aspects, everything that has to do with policies or again, by design implementation governance of elements. And, yeah, good policy governance and not things, yeah. Exactly. So when I'm saying compliance, I mostly mean technology and internet and data compliance and not necessarily the governance, the corporate side of compliance. Uh -huh. um, and then again, it goes hand in hand with data protection uh, regulation that recently in the last three years, I would say, um, GDPR, yeah. very, I'm very a, dominant uh, everywhere. Yeah. Not I only in Europe. For, um, I worked for a, a company that looked for lost people for a little while. So it was very, very exceptionally high GDPR, like policy and dealt with adoption, looking for adoptions and lost people and, and family friends. So really, really like, GDPR was super, super important in their policies. Yeah, so and GDPR, and now you probably heard of CCPA, and yeah. it's everywhere you look right now. So I think no Western country or even Eastern country that didn't issue something similar to GDPR. Um, and then again, it goes hand in hand with ethics, because if you're talking about Europe, and if you're talking about now US, when they starting to be very, very focused on it, it goes, um, if you're developing a product, if it's data driven, then it comes along with ethics requirements. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a written law, but everything that has to do with code of conduct and everything that has to do with the potential sensitivity of the vertical that you operate in. So potential sensitivity always uh, comes in a context of medical information, even though right now the information that we're talking about is mostly literature and not person related. Yeah. Uh, but again, all these buzzwords always raise questions of ethics, compliance, and data protection. Um, mm. Then I made Bianca, actually, uh, the context was a product that I'm building um, that is around automated compliance mm. tools. Um, and she told me about the project. And then maybe diving a little bit deeper into what I think uh, or observe that the project could use whether I'm going to perform it or whether I'm going to frame it um, would be in three different levels. I guess there are more. Mm -hmm. The main three that I could recognize would be the everything that has to do with ethics and code of conduct. Yeah, like the because it's a community, so we always yeah. talk about the way people, how you can contribute, what is required from you when you're contributing. What are you attesting um, or waiving, for example, because we're talking about people contributing from their own knowledge and their own intellectual property, if you will. Um, then we have all the content aspects. So you're creating technology, you're creating content that is information, data, everything. 
I understand that the concept is open source and open source is a concept and idea and, and, and community, right? But it, it's only, it only means that it's supposed to come under a specific license or agreement mm -hmm. of participation or creative commons, or you can, I, I don't know, the analogy would be the G, GPL, the GNU GPL. I've been, look, I've been looking at GPL mostly. GPL3 is one that I think works. Some, for right now, I think we're mostly working on it under MIT as kind of the rule of thumb, because exactly. MIT is one of the least affecting in all forms, but it doesn't, for me, doesn't protect um, the intellectual property people are making and, and stop it being misused in some ways or taken to a place that wasn't part of the intention. Whereas GPL for me at least protects us from it being co-opted and then sold in some other way, even though people have generated this with goodwill and good intent. I want to protect that goodwill and good intent in that sense. Yeah, I, so I mean, I think that. GPL goes hand in hand more to your concept, but then again, I didn't yeah. dive deep enough to you know, to recommend what I think. I just know that GPL gives you the most freedom and very Yeah, it's described it's as copyleft, isn't it? Yeah. It's described as copyleft sometimes, so it's, it has some copyright protections, but most of it are, are given up. And it's given up for the creator. It's almost like, from my understanding, I'm not a lawyer, but I read a lot. Um, and yeah, it's kind of, it's it's got elements of open source, an open, an open source, but also the idea that if something is open source, it can never be then made on open source, even if it is part of a bigger product somewhere else. The elements yeah. that are under this GPL have to still be open source and stops, exactly. it's and it stops that intellectual hiding. It stops intellectual hiding later on from building somebody building a, an amazing tool later on and making proprietary, but all of the technology that we make still would have to be open source. And that's something that I very much want to protect. Exactly. If, if somebody is doing it under GPL, it just means that they must make their source code open to our uh -huh. community, but they can get ownership of that proprietary right for everything that it did around it. The wrapping, designing, yeah. the distribution. Yeah, exactly. If, if, some, if somebody so, makes a really clever, usable interface for a technology we built, yeah, they've made a clever, usable interface and they can charge for that, but they can't exactly. charge for the machine learning technology behind it. They can't learn, charge for the AI technology that gets built by the community because exactly. that is and, and they must siloing make information it. and it works, it works against the idea of the community being created for the, for the commons and for the, for the global good. It kind of works against that in that sense. So I want to protect that mentality rather than potentially making very, very amazing technologies and tools and then someone just taking it and never letting anyone else. It would, obviously, it'd still be open source in its raw form, but if they expand on it and then hide it behind their own technology and their own proprietary chip, I don't want that. I don't want that at all. I want to be able to, if someone makes it for the Creative Commons, it should still stay in the Commons. Whether someone puts a clever skin on it or adapts it later on, the bits that we make in this space should still be open for me. Yeah, I mean, you understand the context. I mean, there are many licenses. I agree that GPL mm -hmm. probably is one for the concept that you're creating. Uh, but just as a um, one of the, the areas that I think should be um, framed is the license of the contact or, you know, the, the terms under which people are contributing. So they know it in- Yeah, yeah and it's, uh, that is clarifying for sure. We definitely need policy around that. Yeah, and, and maybe the third main aspect, third or third and fourth together would be what I call the in product flow, compliance flow. So for example, people joining the effort as volunteers, as sponsors, as whatever, they submitting a form, they providing their information. This information and their participation should be A, under certain terms that they should agree upon, whether it's the code of conduct, the privacy policy, that means, hey, how are we going to use your data? Uh, mm -hmm. Can you trust us or don't trust us at all, but it's under your responsibility? What are the terms of, again, using this website of Corona, using this community? Um, so I think, again, terms or service or any format of, of agreement, you call it with privacy policy, that are must, legally must, by any Western uh, law. And then also behind it, everything that has to do to really the data protection. To make it actually stick to data protection rules and laws, yeah. 
So right now, I actually mentioned this to Bianca, I'm not really worried because the scales are not very high. However, I mean, most of the type of data that you guys are involved with considered to be um, uniquely identifying or could be sensitive, personally sensitive, because you do record uh, video chat, you streaming faces, audios. Um, so it could be considered as sensitive. That's why you must be mindful to data protection aspects, even if it's the minimum required, even if everything is disclaimer and, and the participant can, as far as they're concerned, edit, remove whatever um, they want to do about their data, still it needs to be in place. Yeah. So those are the main urgent things. I guess that once diving deep into maybe even more processes or business operations or any other operation that you guys are working at the moment, probably there will be more and more needs. I mentioned to Bianca yesterday, maybe some of you working on funding opportunities that depending on the jurisdiction, the country, or the type of funding that you want, you will be asked, you ask, but the project will be asked about certain ethics concerns. Ethics, go data data governance, concerns. yeah. Yeah, I've Especially been looking when you're at- talking um, about, yeah. I've been looking at some funding related to a number of things because obviously we're international, so funding kind of a bit of a, and we're not officially anywhere. We're kind of everywhere and not officially anywhere yet because we still have not formalized a, net, a legal entity in any mm -hmm. nation yet. So because mm -hmm. we're not formalized a legal entity in any nation, we don't really technically exist in a legal term. And because we don't exist in a legal term, looking at funding, I've looked and I'm like, ah, well, there's, it's my list of things that I, we need to do before we can even attempt a, fund, a funding bid or anything. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking through them things makes me go, yeah, these are the things that I know we need, exactly like data ethics policies. And um, my, my, sister, my sister helps run a hospital and I've had a discussion about some of the things we're dealing with, like you need to write some governance real quick. And I'm like, yeah. I do, but I have absolutely no experience in doing it. So can, I need to find someone to help me. <laughs> Like, there, there, yeah. yeah, there are two sides to it, by the way, when we're talking about governance and policies and registration and incorporation. Um, there is the corporate side, that it's all the governance and where you incorporate this entity and probably as a nonprofit organization. And then you have some benefits, tax benefits, but also data protection. This is one side of it. And I know I'm a lawyer, but I'm not really into corporate. I just yeah. know the need and I know what the, I mean, the implications of any registration. Yeah. I'm a product compliance person. It means that everything that has to do to the substance, the business operation, the data, the context, the product, the flow, the community, everything around that, this is my field. That's where I, I, I call it. And, I that's, swim. And, that, and that's the thing is, is Corona White is kind of the product, which is why as much as yeah. there is, there is yes, technically, like you're dividing it into like, that's corporate and that's, business and that's like like product the majority of it is product even the things that broach into business because the business corporate element does not exist yet and even when it does exist is going to be a much smaller component than the community which is kind of the product as well as the solution so it is kind of in that way it needs to be like yeah there's lots and lots of questions around making sure we're managing data protection correctly we've been doing as best as we can with what we know and we've been very like limiting in how we do it but we do know there needs to be like written policies that people can sign up to and also policies that people can opt out of i mean w when we record calls it tells you at the beginning and if you don't want to be recorded you don't you know you can Exactly. choose to not be in it and it's, yeah. and, it's and, and there is kind of elements like that but um the community itself is trying to push this transparency and the transparency is for the benefit of everyone i mean we've had i've had cases where people have come forward and and this you know discuss something that's sensitive and or something that they're not happy about and they understand that that will still be discussed by a small number of people to deal with that complaint that problem that issue um but transparency is the only way that gets fixed quickly and, and healthily. But we Absolutely. need to make sure we write the, we need to make sure we've got like a governance process to that rather than just an ad hoc solve it as it comes. Because I understand that no matter how, how ad, hoc, ad hoc we are as an organization, we still have to exist within the realms because otherwise we're going to get accidentally sued just because someone tried to do a good thing and, and 
someone decided that that wasn't the right thing and and and, and i don't want people i don't want people to get sued just because they're trying to help because <laughs> that is yeah, really... exactly exactly the point and 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 you're right about the fact that it started as a community and running fast i think the last thing you should think would be the governance the compliance the legal aspect i don't think this is something that any entrepreneur or any new project should be too mindful too of, focused on, but it needs to have a little bit of it unless it's a really risky idea but this is exactly the right process as far as i see it when things are growing um that's the point to start and, and put like to frame some policies or to understand how we filter how we screen how we're monitoring how we make sure that this system is not being misused at the moment because now we have something that is meaningful or something that you know get exists like, yeah. this and meaningful traction um and this is the point where you want to start to to on one hand avoid the the misuse or the abusive behavior on the other hand you want to start protect what you already have uh, exactly. it's both sides of it. so if being more uh pragmatic uh, in this call i think that my immediate the way I can emit, like help in in most immediate way would be probably in two main aspects. One of them may be to frame those um, policy needs, policy, legal, and ethical. To frame them in maybe task art or the understanding of what should be placed, why, according to which reference we will call it, and how to do it. And then within this frame, I can say that everything that has to do with the code of conduct or the need around privacy protection and ethics um, i can start addressing um, then the rest may be open it up to additional volunteers from compliance and legal i can also engage some people from my own network to see if they are willing to pick up on you know writing these terms of service or checking more into which gpl would be better or again privacy policy maybe together with me because it's part of the privacy protection aspect you know what kind of data yeah, two parts of it yeah there's because yeah, part of our product is data and part of our organization is data it covers both sides yeah we've got to exactly. look after the community and the members of the community but also the things yeah. that the community makes yeah. and that data so yeah so when i say that when i say product and normally i i do split uh, what i call corporate to production i mean everything that has to do with the product consumers if it's a yeah. bit bit, but right like this context right now there is no product that concerns uh um individuals so i'm talking more about the community as a product uh, mm -hmm. people that you on board the flow that onboards people, it means yeah. the website forms where you have to add checklists, links to privacy policy, what people should confirm and in what stage before they yep. join, before they hit the submit button. If you sponsor and you provide payment details that, you know, everything that has to do with the flow, understanding if the payment yep. details are going to the community or if there's a third party payment processors that in charge and then we want to integrate their own i don't want to exhaust you right now but no. normally yeah, to be really fair my brain runs at this speed usually so don't worry <laughs> really so what i can suggest this is what i normally do with my clients it's as a user as a volunteer that on volunteer or sponsor i can review the full flow as if i was a new user and then just suggest each point each point of the flow what kind of disclaimers or notifications or check oh, what, yeah, what checkboxes need to exist yeah should be added and reference to a privacy policy here and etc et uh, policy there yeah yeah so um as, again immediate next steps i think i could help with uh these main things of course that Sounds additional great. need will come along and once you will say hey we incorporated and registered the organization in new york then it will have specific implications and then you say we want to apply for horizon europe grant then there will be other rising needs um yeah, I've also done I mean, that probably. yeah i don't want to get too too bogged down into the to that side of it but it is lots of things that i've been thinking and trying to analyze and understand so yeah maybe we need to get someone with a corporate legal experience on to do that side of thinking and yeah well, there's lots of questions on where we should incorporate if we do incorporate are we going to incorporate in multiple places and almost have like multiple versions of corona y that are in a community of linked organizations 
are we going to go as a pure non-profit? Is there going to be a mixture of pro non-profits and profits all as a collective? Is it going to be multiply owned? It, there's loads of questions, loads of questions that uh, these are things that I yeah, think Yeah, but I, I think that at this part, it's, it's possible. First of but all, the policy the stuff and the data stuff is definitely things we need to do yeah. like right now. But incorporation as a non-profit, I think it's also one of the first few things you should do. And it will be interesting to know where, like jurisdiction-wise, did you think of incorporating the business? Uh, Netherlands is one of the potential candidates right now. It's it's quick, it's easy, it's low risk, it's low risk. Um, it's in the EU, so it's obviously protected under the EU policies as well. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at in the within the UK as a, there's a number of different organisation organisational structures in the UK. You've got like community community companies or community inclusive companies or something like that. CICs, which mm -hmm. is um, it's a it's not quite a non profit but it has limitations on who can be, how much profit can be taken out of it. A very, very high limitation. Like it's, I think it's only 5% over a year that any of the profits can be extracted out. And even then that profit can only go to like certain entities. So it's, it's nearly a non-profit, but there is a few advantages because um, there's opportunity for obviously investors to make feel like they're investing in a big, uh, they can invest and still make some money off of it, but it's a very low priority side of it. But the disadvantage is obviously tax related. They won't be tax exempt like nonprofits are. So mm -hmm. it's there's lots of questions and lots of things that I'm I'm trying to research and understand. But I'm looking within my jurisdiction in the UK, obviously. Um, but American jurisdictions and American nonprofits seem to be a really big quagmire. It takes about a year through the IRS, and and even if we case of we might get that in, in, in the long term as well, because that means um, American American volunteers could claim they're not, you know, they could claim that they're donating their time in a non-profit to a non-profit through their work and all that sort of stuff could exist in America because we do have a lot of Americans. So it is one of the things that we need to look at. But it's, there's the, I don't think many things like Corona Y exist. So they're in, we're into questions of like collective ownership and collect, it's just it's it's a bit there's lots of questions there's more questions than there is answers right now for anyone and then obviously more experts and more people with knowledge in that space is only going to increase our collective knowledge but it's thoughts we're having but i think data compliance and um data protection and that sort of then product compliance definitely is the first thing we need to be doing because that exists already as a problem and we know yeah. it does we've been trying to we've been offsetting it but we've not written down the legal side of it and done and done the documents for it yeah i'm just saying like the first basic things because um a dependency of if you're going to be registered as a nonprofit in specific jurisdictions whether it's europe or or us there are certain um, um exceptions you know of, of the i mean you have a lot of, of exceptions according to the regulation of when you're talking about processing data, it means that it's supposed to be easier process-wise on the data process-wise. Um, that's what I'm saying. The way you're going to incorporate this business going to, uh, there's going to be implication about your obligations as an organization with respect to the data of the people within mm -hmm. the organization. Okay, yeah, I was asking. Uh, but in any case, uh, I can dive a little bit deeper into understanding what kind of exceptions and then maybe to shed some light on that would be helpful. Side and yeah, where maybe how uh, yeah. I mean, to call it. Yeah, we definitely we definitely need to have um, more legal minds in the space because we've got a glut of tech minds. Like we're not running out of people with technical knowledge and technical understanding. And some people like Bianca, who's technical and organizational and got a good mind for a number of different things. It's not that we're running out of people who are smart. It's just specific smarts are sometimes really needed and legal ones as much. I, I used to work briefly in a, a law firm, but I worked doing support work in there. So I can, I, I, I can, I can, I can talk a good talk, but there's so much detail involved that. <laughs> There are, there are it's much all, to tell, it's, it's, law is one of them few i mean like lots of specialisms are all about the specialism but law is one of them things that yeah they, they're like if you get if you get the details wrong it goes from being fine to really not fine very quickly <laughs> the You're details right, matter but i want to i want to make you feel a little bit better Le legal minds are great but sometimes it's dangerous mm -hmm. to help 
to the speed, you know, that you can move because in this case... Oh, it case, does, it slows, it slows things need, down. Yeah, I'm we need to remember up. that the concept is open source and to open source, it's not about just the open source, just the concept. There is a full uh, manifest behind it and mm. there's a full legal concept behind it. So understanding mm. the concept of open source and the concept of GPL helps a lot with producing the legal constraints, you know, that our legal mind sometimes can, you know, uh, put sticks in your wheel. And I don't think this is something you want too much. That's why I'm thinking like immediate next steps, only the basics and the urgent. No, and absolutely. The urgent and the basics is the first, first process. Like I said, yeah. somebody then, like exactly. even knowing exactly knowing where people need to take this is, yeah, you need to accept that this is our privacy policy. I mean, privacy policies are fairly standard. They, they, there's probably not a lot of variation between them and sometimes they're a little bit yeah. long-winded <laughs> but it's fine <laughs> i'm joking I, i'm trying to, there are uh, variations again because we're working in a global world and just, yeah their own nuance uk their own europe their own every country they have their own and their own requirements so normally you need to do it modular and addressing um the us people the, the eu the, but the, well, yeah, because about it. you don't need to yeah, yeah I, I can I can even tell that just as an internet user because I'm very like, you know, when it pops up with cookies and all that sort of stuff, I actually open them and go, nope, not them, not them. I'm the sort of person that does that. So, really? <laughs> I yeah, I genuinely do. I open it up and see which ones who's getting who's getting what cookies. I turn ones off. I'm not happy about. I go through that sort of stuff because I'm I'm a bit of a weirdo. So very savvy now. <laughs> very savvy user. I do, and I, but I can always tell the difference between American and British websites or British on a British policy ones or European EU ones and American ones because American ones are very much more like, oh, we'll have it all. You have no choice. Choice. Uh, whereas European ones, because of European law, they're like, no, you can, you have to be able to opt out of elements of it, understand, they have to explain the different elements of it, what's advertising, what's tracking, how it's using, which, which vendors. And I'm the sort of person that goes through, no, 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 repeatedly. <laughs> you cannot have any of them things, sorry. I am the worst person for websites to track. I have like four things in my browser that block things. Like I am the antithesis of being a useful data but ironically, it means I'm kind of skeptical of overuse and over extraction of everybody else's data because I won't want to be on the receiving end of it. And it means that it takes you forever to browse the web. The web Absolutely. I guess. <laughs> yeah, my, my, my partner and my friends hate it when they come on my browser and they open stuff and it's like, why does nothing work? It's like, because I block all the scripts and I block all the, all the cookies and I block all the trackers and I have to choose when I turn them on, not the other way around. <laughs> why don't you just use incognito or something? You know? Because incognito is limiting, limiting and logins and stuff. You can only be logged in once and then you have to re-log in all the time. So that I, I balance inconvenience with, with convenience and there's a balancing act of the two all the time. So yeah, but that's kind of how I, I've been like that for 15 years on the yeah. internet. So. <laughs> so yeah, very savvy. Actually, I have my, my major is in um, the last eight years, I've been working very closely with ad tech community. So before it became so famous, I've been working with all these companies that GDPR tried to stop, which are mostly the big ad tech companies, all the tech, all the advertising technologies and GMP and the way it happens behind the scenes. So everything that you're blocking right now, it's exactly that. Which is ironic because I need all that data on our website to better understand people. It's really ironic. I'm like, I don't want to have to get everyone's data, but it, data, I am the sort of person that goes, data is the most important information and data is the most important thing to understand anything. And the more data you have, the more you can understand it. But I literally don't let anyone have any of mine. <laughs> So, you know, yeah. it's all good, as you said, it's the transparency. So, I mean, you have a good and that's cause, and, and, you know about you convey yeah, and the cause and, and you're being transparent about it so people are just happy to to trust you you know it's a matter of trust and yeah yeah, yeah and, and that's what the difference is is obviously um the idea behind our community is we hold all our hands open going this is what we've got in our hands you can't mm -hmm. see everything in it obviously we're not going to publish public data or you know email lists we did at the beginning accidentally <laughs> it was very funny when i first joined there was yeah. literally a spreadsheet of everyone you know right. where they were what time zone it was what pass you know like we might as well have put passwords on that and within like yeah, 70 80 people we were like yeah we can't have this this is this is a really bad idea this is a this is a harvest point for someone else yeah, when so they this, find this it is a little bit dangerous and by the way you know what you didn't have 
you didn't even have to do this mistake. I'll just give you an example. If I'm an opportunist right now and I just want to get your full mailing list to try and publish my own business and services, I can quickly join as a volunteer. I can quickly yeah. get work to the up. List. I just, you know, download or copy your spreadsheets and I have about 1500 right now email addresses of yeah. professionals across the world that I can just spam or reach out. Which is something I'm very aware of, which is why I am very careful with who gets to go look on that particular list of things and they have to, but I'm not so, it's one of them balancing acts between like, you can't not let anyone in because then no one would be doing it and then you can't get any volunteers helping you. So you've got to, you've got to build up some trust and you've got to hope that um, the people who are coming forward to help like Bianca are trustworthy and, and honorable and decent. And, and you can only do that by spending a bit of time, but we definitely need to have like policy to make sure that we've got a code of conduct that, but yeah, I mean, like I've literally got, I've got a document somewhere with loads and loads and loads of Slack logins with emails attached to them all because we moved them from one place to the other and my computer's got that and i'm like that is a that is a question i mean emails are not super private they're not like they're not like someone's day at birth or something but still they they're to be personally pre identifiable information yeah they're pretty yeah they're personally Without, identifiable again, information still they consider to be personal i mean if someone want to if eventually right now you're dealing with very high quality people i assume but and Absolutely. and the likelihood of, of someone turning this against or someone um you know using this against the community mm -hmm. maybe is not likely right now that it's enough one misuse um to learn about it so you're completely right but you know as i said we'll start with privacy policy but i'm a little bit nagging on this and i'm going into details normally but so i will also offer and suggest options to protect the data better it means that if someone is using and he doesn't want to share their again th their personal information then providing them ability to mask the details for example i saw that you have your own domain i know it costs money to open email with the company domain but maybe offering some people that are unwilling to give their own personal information to use domain email or you know there are many many ways eventually to offer people to protect the data or to provide option to protect the data. Um, sometimes it can be costly. So right now, I don't think it's the time and the place. That's why I'm talking about the urgent and immediate. But over time, um, of course, I can suggest ways to maybe go more into the direction yeah. of protecting data, I mean, even if it's not yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's um, it's something that I don't even particular. I'm not 100% comfortable with because, like, the email address I've been using for most of, like, Corona Y stuff is one of my. I have a number of email addresses, no surprise, and it's actually my like main work one, which is kind of attached to like really important stuff to me. I've got ones that I sign up to loads of things with and I have absolutely no care. It's not got my name on it. It's not got anything attached to me that's actually me other than the fact that my computer logs onto it. That's the only thing that's an identifier on it. But this one's got like my actual name and like I've, has my date of birth attached to it and is attached to like bills that I pay, which is like way more. And I'm, I, even I've had that question. I'm like, I'm tempted to change completely, get make a new email address just for Crow and Y stuff now because it's becoming the transparency is super important, but it is also yeah. like, if someone misuses it, I'm opening myself up to something. Exactly. So I just, exactly. even I'm, and, if even I'm if uncomfortable use... with it and I'm seeing it, like I don't want other people yeah. to feel that uncomfortableness when they're not the one who's, they're just trusting like Bianca and yeah. I and and after to be honorable and not, not to misuse it or to be good, a good judge of character to work out if anyone joins is honorable. And you can never completely 100% know, you can't. It's just not, not how the world works. And it, it's not just that. Eventually, when you have a list of email addresses, it doesn't matter if it's attached to identifiable person. It could be donaldduck at gmail.com. Eventually, if someone is misusing it, it doesn't matter who sees it. It falls under spam violation, it falls under privacy protection violation, and it, it doesn't matter if the person is actually identified or not. It means that the data is associated behind the scene or attached or attribute, attributed to an individual. Anyway, I, I don't want to, again, burden with too many details. I think that we understand that it's, it's crucial to do something mm -hmm. at the beginning. 
And then over time, if there is a will, time, attention to do a little bit beyond, um, then we can just put it in one task list and every time do something, you know, just add on top of it. If we understand their sensitivity in one area, maybe just tackle the sensitivity. Maybe if over time there is opening to new markets or funding opportunities, then there will be other tasks to be covered, you know. Um, the idea is to really show or, or be able to, to dem demonstrate throughout the process that the organization is mindful to these concerns. The ethics concerns, the privacy protection concerns, and somehow addresses them. Um, so I can definitely help with these three media tasks that I just mentioned. Um, and then I guess we can continue and take it from there. That's, that sounds amazing. Thank you very much for joining up and offering, and offering your uh, skills and, and help. It's always appreciated. Thank you. It was really nice to read about the project. I shared with Bianca, but one of, I don't know if it's good or bad, but one of the companies that I'm working with did something similar in concept, uh, proprietary. Uh, yeah, uh, I think Bianca's already shared that with me. Beautifully. <laughs> things, things move around Corona wide real fast. <laughs> yeah, yes, I, I mean, she told me, she told me about it. And then I was working with this company and I saw that only for Corona, they launched a free version because they have a bigger version for um, wide medical fields, something really amazing um but it's proprietary it's not open source uh, and that's kind of i mean that's one of the things that this community is going to have to deal with the fact that we are kind of taking on lots and lots of institutions that are very wedded into making sure that they can make not necessarily lots of money but make money and money is a very very strong motivator but we are kind of like annoying science and entire economic models and the healthcare system and how organizations could even run as like an, in a business sense at all you know we're asking lots of questions and lots of and we're kind of challenging lots of already accepted models that exist mm -hmm. and everyone who's part of their models is going to be wanting you know something like this to fail because the last thing they want is something like this to succeed because that undermines their position or their status or their opportunities and that's like we kind of taken on lots of different things at the same time but we need to make sure we you know cross all the cross all the t's and dot the i's and legally we need to make sure we're squeaky clean and covering as all the thoughts that we're having and we make sure we've got paperwork to say that we're having these thoughts because these are all things i worry about in my head but i have not written any of it down because i'm doing too many other things and I don't really have the expertise to write it down. Mm -hmm. And that's where you come in. Thank you very much. No problem. Um, that's it. I think on, on my side, I mean, I don't think it's worthwhile to get into details in the, the orientation call, but I think it was... Uh, um, or, with, with regards to orientation, we've kind of orientated on the, the whole legal problems. Do you yeah. need any orientation of what Corona Y is and how it's working and anything else as a as a as a project, as any of the things that any, any, any of the ideas that we're moving forward with, any of the bigger goals? So I, I have the bigger, the big picture because again, I got some uh, links from Bianca and then I read the document, the orientation document, so it gave me kind of better understanding. Of course, I still have many questions, but those probably will shoot. be a over time. No, no I, shoot, I mean, shoot. my questions are more about the small details, but I guess this is something you get to taste and understand once you dive Some, into Yeah, it. sometimes being in it is the way you learn what it exactly, tastes like. Yeah, because it's yeah. mostly about the coordination, and I understand that there is no irri, but there is sort of way to coordinate things, but normally and this is maybe my personal side normally when i work i always have a focal point that gives me the information the feed you know if i'm writing documents that uh, i need to feed them with raw data and raw information um, so i always have focal points maybe more than one maybe a product person business person right now we don't have the business side but um i guess that if i have questions about data and, and i'm talking about the not the data that is used for the knowledge not side. Not the tool but, data, yeah, but the people yeah, data. But the, um, exactly, everything that has to do with people and volunteers and the system. Uh, that yeah, I Bianca, was, Bianca, I and Shirley are basically the three people who are mostly involved in the 
the people side of data. Obviously, there's a couple of other people like Hartu who has access to it, but he doesn't. He doesn't really get involved. He's just we've kind of taken it upon ourselves to solve them problems and make sure that they work as well as they can, and the onboarding and these sort of things. They are all kind of our domain. And when I say our, there's like a big chunk of it's mine. And Bianca's been doing the 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 CRM stuff and the tool and building the tools to make sure that they work and work how we need them to. And Shirley's kind of supervising and over, overall thinking about how onboarding works and how we need to improve that. And I'm, I'm interested in the user experience side of it. That's kind of where my, um, I'm a bit of a, I really introduced myself. I probably should do that just to, for clarity. Um, I'm a bit of a, a bit of an oddball. I've worked in many different places and I've done lots of different things. Um, I work, I currently work in special education and special needs and I spent the last sort of six years in special education and special needs, especially people with autism. So I'm very mindful of like how people treat people. It's kind of why I'm interested in communities and organizations. Um, but for the last 10 years, I've helped run a, an online community for music producers and music technology, which I'm really interested in technology and music technology specifically in media. Um, but I have kind of an inkling interest in many different things. I read widely. I read a lot on psychology and business and marketing and, and these sort of broad, broad thoughts and broad interests. And I've worked in, I've got a, a, a system, systemic mind, I think, through things in a systemic way. And I look at things as always part of something bigger or, you know, when you zoom into it, it gets complicated. Every time you zoom in, there's always more complexity. People don't like arguing with me because my, normally my answer is, it's not as easy as that and it's not as simple as that. And they hate it when I start, to, well, there's details you're missing and even details I'm missing because I don't know enough about this particular field. It's an entertaining argument until I go, well, have you thought about this? And then it just gets lost, gets lost in the details. Until they but, tell um, you, you're right. <laughs> Uh, I don't mean to argue. I'm not intentionally argumentative, but it just, when somebody makes a poor argument, I generally want to go, that's a poor argument. <laughs> uh, um, so yeah, I've worked in different, lots of different places. I've, I, like I say, I supported a client for 18 months in a law firm and ended up joining in conversations with really high level solicitors and lawyers. And, and I'm sat there, not even as an employee of a law firm talking about law. And they're like, that's a really good idea. Or like, that's a really good, astute way of putting that. And I'm like, I'm not even a lawyer. You guys are all getting paid 50, 50,000 pounds to be here. I'm like, no, <laughs> why, why am I offering? But I just can't help but join into interesting conversations and, and giving, my, giving my point of view, even if it's very un, uninformed. Sometimes an uninformed opinion tells you what's not being explained. So uh, yeah, that's kind of my weird little rant and rumble around it. I joined Corona Y to just help the community work as a community because I'm not a coder, but I have a technical mind. So I understand and I've got enough experience with people who are very technical and not technical and communicating like the translation. I consider myself a bit of a tech translator. The amount of times I've been in conversations and like you two are saying the same thing. And you're just saying it in a way that either one of you can't understand just because you, the way you're explaining or expressing things or the point of views you've got or your knowledge is just like, you're, you're a medical knowledge and you're an AI knowledge and you're kind of saying the same thing, but you're not saying it so you can understand each other. And sometimes I just sit in the middle and go, you're both saying the same thing. You're saying this, you're saying this. This is summarized. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's my, my story, my career story, because I work with techies, but I also work with lawyers and they never understand each other. They think they do, but they never. And, you, I'm, you and, and I am a translator of many in the middle, just changing the message, right? You always feel like, there's like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Totally and, and so, yeah, I'm kind of, um, I'm, I've, I've, and, I'm, and I do that with a number of things, you know, I'm interested in design and design technology. I'm interested in music and music technology, but I enjoy making things more understandable and more explainable. And like I said, working with people with special needs teaches you how to break down an explanation to its actual understandable parts rather than just making it complicated just because you want to sound like you're a smart ass. Because it's really easy to sound like a smart ass if you use really complicated words, but unless the message is understood, it's an absolute worth, worthless piece of it. You know, communication requires understanding. If it's not understood, then it's not communication. You just you just making noise. Good point. So yeah, that's my weird little part of my 
part of my body and my brain and that's how I am. And I've kind of always been this weird person that I'm, I'm enjoying the fact that in some way that my weird multidimensional brain is actually being really useful in a weird space of really intelligent people. Because honestly, the community is full of so many smart people. It makes me feel like a right dunce. But, you know, I do what I can do and I translate when I can. It should, um, I know it's not relevant to the introduction, but uh, I have this small meetup that I started in 2015 with a group of friends. I'm from Tel Aviv now, I'm based in Berlin. Um, but over time, I acquired amazing people that have like really broad field of interest. They can talk about any topic, but most of them are scientists or hackers or coming from cybersecurity. And what I notice is that every time that I meet someone i just feel smarter and inspired and i want to connect yeah. them with each other so i started to host you know in my living room and to call like many friends and to see the dynamic yeah you just and you just love being like, in a room full of really smart people talking because you're like wow it's you amazing need, and i always yeah. i always did it around a uh, theme and my theme is always food because i believe that food is the best connector between i was, I was a I was a chef for five years. I'm very much interested in food. There you go. My God, you wore everything. You were any vertical. So eventually it was super successful. It was always lasted like really nine, 10 yeah. hours. And, and, and then yeah. we did it once in a while. And now we even, I hosted an ex-hacker from NASA and the head of security of Apple. But, you know, every time I travel, because I travel a lot, then I pick these people that I think, oh, you are a superstar that like to talk about everything. Join the next meetup. So just saying it sounds yeah, like I mean, really... I mean I, honestly there's times I've been part of like streaming and gaming communities for well 20 years now but um but I've been pretty active in, in streaming communities for a while and and I do seem to I've seem to have just got this I don't know if it's a skill or it's just a personality but I can sit and talk to people in a stream for hours and hours and they can go all over with it can never I, I, as the one of the streaming communities i'm part of there's a thousand people watching that sometimes and we'll talk about like the guy i really like talking to zeke he is like we'll talk about science stuff and then we'll talk about like the game and the mechanics of the game and why that's realistic and why that's not realistic and then we'll go back off into like politics for a bit and then we'll come back and talk about like, argue about the philosophy of sound or something and we'll go all over and some people just laugh right. going you guys talk crap and like yeah, we really do, but it's always an interesting discussion. <laughs> it's like, it, it might, we might be really uninformed, but it's interesting. <laughs> so, and I've, I think I've just been doing that so long that it just is second nature to me. I'm just really, yeah. And I really enjoy interesting conversations with interesting people, even if it's just to almost like drill out of the mind. I mean, I had a call earlier on with a, a guy who's um, an entrepreneur who's organizing like a, a, an organization called Matamor and he wants us to maybe use their system as like a job board or something and then you know I just interviewed him for the first 20 minutes I'm just like what about this and why is your organization exist and what are you trying to get out of it and like how are you funding it and it's like it's drilled into it and I'm like I felt really bad after a little bit but then I ended up talking we, ended, we had an hour and a half phone for call so I'm like mm -hmm. Can't help it. Anyways, I think we should probably call it there before I get even more lost in thought and wander yeah, off. They play recording. No, I'm joking. Uh, but yeah. Um, anyway, uh, thank you for the introduction and thank you for the time. And absolutely, yeah, always, always said, welcome when someone's bringing things where we need and you're definitely needed. Well, I'm glad to know. Uh, I'll start definitely with the framing part of things because I think it's easy and fast. And then the things that I can address myself, um, I'll see how I can do it time-wise. Um, and again, not sure who am I supposed to update, but Bianca, I'm going to use you for all my questions, if that's fine. Yeah, Bianca's good. Um, I'm good. I mean, um, I don't know if we've got a channel for legal or policy. I think we've got a channel for policy and it's exceptionally quiet, but it's kind of got a core of people of Corona Y. Yeah, so, so maybe be policy would be better because policy, cause it's kind like, of yeah policy kind of covers like the legal the legal ideas and yeah, like yeah. The, the policy because not all of it's legal some of it is just like what are the rules that we have defining for ourselves that we thought about you know like code yeah. of conduct is not a law but it's a i mean a legal a, kind of brings bad context so. yeah we've got a policy channel somewhere i'm pretty sure we'll have to go find it yeah, we've got a policy channel, and it's and it's a public one in the sense that like anyone can join it, um, and it is a space where we discuss things like policy of various types. So okay. that's probably the best place for you to go. Um, 
and we'll post this call and I'll put the I'll put this call link in policy because this is kind of a policy one. I won't mind, but I won't, I think I even named this. I think I did. I named the actual call like introductions and policy because it's I knew it was going to be an introduction for you, but I also knew it was going to be a discussion on policy. So. Um, okay. Anyway, thank you very much for your time. I'm look, I look forward to seeing where you progress and uh, shout if you need anything, or if, if, if it, even if it's a case of if you need, or, or also if you can network and bring more people in, always helpful. More legal minds yeah. is going to not never hurt. I mean, obviously, we don't need like hundreds, just a few interested people who are motivated. Honey, I'm going That's to what we want. more legal minds never hurt anything. I don't think that many people will agree, but definitely I'm going to... Legal, legal system needs to exist. It's a, it's a required system. It's not something... It, don't get me wrong. It definitely exaggerates on itself. I have seen legal systems go, you are just making money for the sake of it right now. When you see a million pound bill and you're like, you have not done a million pounds worth of work. That's a lie. <laughs> but legal expertise is what you're paying for. And yeah, I understand the complexity of it. Yes. Anyways, so I'll try thank you very to much for your time. Sure, thank you. Have a good rest of your day. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Bye.